So, welcome everyone to the last session of DrupalCon. Well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, or almost the last one, there's still the closing session. Um, thank you for choosing this one. Uh, I'll try to make it worth your while. So, for this session, I would like to talk to you about um, Drupal Contrib's commercial horizon uh, and about API integrations and, um, and about GUIs and about clickers and about business models and about um, conference budgets, like a whole lot of different things. And um, if I count all of the possible constituencies, uh, I think there's four. So there's a lot of different audiences to cater to. Uh, so I wanted to just do a raise of hands, like who here is here because of um, community? Like uh, who here is organizing community events and is looking for more sponsorships? Okay, a few. Uh, who here is from a Drupal agency looking for more work? Yeah. Uh, who here is looking for, uh, who here has an API and is like a SaaS owner? Okay, a few. So some overlap, which is fun. And then who here is a site builder looking to learn more about um, third-party integrations and stuff? Okay. So that's a lot of different hats. <laughs> Daunting task. Um, I've done my best to compile something that caters a bit to everybody. Um, if there are specific questions, just ask me at the end. Um, um, yeah. So I'd like to start with the problem. You see, because I think um, we have kind of a problem in the Drupal community. Um, and it's this problem. We, um, when there's fundraising efforts happening, uh, it's always the same people giving money. And it's never really end users or very few end users that are contributing to our community initiatives. Um, it's um, like the, for a few notable ex uh, exceptions, uh, the D8 rules, uh, fundraising effort, which was one of the biggest fundraising efforts for um, uh, a code writing um, uh, initiative, um, was mostly funded by developers. Basically, one developer giving money to another developer, which is kind of weird. Um, and then there were like there were a few um, LSD members, uh, large-scale Drupal members that gave the big bucks, but most of the money I think still came from the community, and. It's kind of, yeah, I don't know. It feels wrong, right? Um, because I think Drupal is a lot like air, water, and the climate. It's a public good. And as a public good, um, it has the freeloader problem that a lot of people are benefiting from it, but not necessarily contributing to it. And, um, and it's a little bit risky because as a result, it's possible that you get a lack of funding in a sea of value. Like a lot of people are getting an enormous amount of value out of a good, uh, and there's not enough to keep maintaining it. And, and that's very risky. Now, um, I don't really like gloom talking. I don't like punishing people. I don't like zero sum thinking. So, I'll, you know, I think that ultimately, even if people are not contributing back, um, that probably should be okay. I think we just need to find better incentives and we need to find other people that have an incentive for contributing um, so that we can keep everything running um, without having to do draconian things like, um, I don't know, um, dual licensing Drupal or something like that. So because, um, but, but it still, it opens up a really interesting question because no matter how big the value that you're providing, if you can't, create a differential, and I'll explain that in a moment, um, it's going to be financially irrelevant. And like this part is still the community part, the part for API integrations. Sorry, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. That's coming later. It's getting better. <laughs> but um, but um, so we, we need to find out ways that we can create a difference between um, what you just get and then uh, like a way to make people pay for, for um, the services that they're getting. In Drupal itself, that won't really work. Uh, there's been some efforts, uh, there was even a talk at this conference about products and features and about how, um, how we could build pay, paying products just like the WordPress community has done um, to uh, like, you know, API stores and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, and there's been a lot of discussion about that, uh, a lot of heated discussion, <laughs> uh, because a lot of people don't really like the idea. But I don't think, I don't think we even need to go there. I think there's better ways. Um, because WordPress has already put a bottom price to that market. Uh, like WordPress is the biggest, right? WordPress has what now? 50% of the CMS web? Or no, it's, it's an insane amount of, of installs. Um, and, and they've built this whole, AP, uh, this whole apps ecosystem, like with vertically integrated apps. Um, and I don't think that Drupal should try to compete against that. I think that there's better ways for us. Like that we were in a different niche. And um, um, so I don't believe that that is Drupal's true potential. Because Drupal is like Lego. Drupal is a, a bunch of APIs that you puzzle together to build whatever you want and exactly what you want. And um, Drupal is a, kind of like a graphical interface in front of a bunch of APIs. And uh, that opens up a whole bunch of different perspectives and ideas and possibilities. So I don't think that we should try to be the app store. I think that there's, um, there's other ways to, to um, generate value for our community. So, but then the solution. <laughs> um, so how can we capture more value? How can we grow our community and make our community more valuable to more people? I think one really interesting place where we could do that is uh, API integrations. Now, for almost forever, well, not forever, like 10 years that I've been running my consultancy, I was thinking about ways that I could build a product, like, uh, you know, passive income, that whole story. Uh, I'm sure a lot of others here in the audience are thinking in similar directions. So I was, I was always kind of like trying to figure it out and, and then like, you know, go, you go through the list of all the open source business models that are there. And there's this one at the bottom there, like uh, API integrations that always struck a chord to me because it felt like really elegant where you give away something valuable to the community uh, that becomes a sort of a carrier, a window through which it becomes easier to offer your services to that community. And a sort of a plug-in plug service um, into the community. I always thought I had to build that myself. But maybe we don't have to. Maybe we can help others that already have built a successful API and successful SaaS application uh, to extend their product, to uh, find their way into a bigger market, help them become more successful, and give them an avenue to give back to a community that gives back to them. So it's, I don't think that we need to, uh, I don't believe in just telling people you have to, and you know, why don't you do your part? Like this, well, um, don't ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country stuff. To some extent that's true, but um, I don't think, I, I don't really believe in that. I don't think that's the best way of, of playing things. Um, it, it, you know, I try to be an altruist. I, I enjoy being with altruists, but uh, you can't force feed altruism. Uh, that's something that has to come from inside. So how can we make Drupal more valuable? Uh, so like, you know, the multi-layered, I hope you appreciate, there went a lot of thought into <laughs> the multi-layered Drupal cake. Um, so how can we, like, if you don't look at products and features, like, but you look just at Contrib. Um, I think we've been overlooking this for, for forever, actually. Um, because like the traditional chain value chain in Drupal is a customer pays money to a company or a consultant. A consultant gives money to the community to keep things going. And there's this linear flow uh, where you know, some of the value is screamed off and, and then hopefully some ends up uh, back in the community. But if you, if you do it this way, uh, there could be like an alternative flow uh, where um, there's mutual beneficialness, uh, where API companies uh, and SaaS companies could benefit from our community. Because they already know how to make money. They already have a product. They already, oh, in most cases, some cases they don't. But um, in most cases, um, they've already figured out um, like, you know, how to make people pay for their services uh, and just, they haven't fully reached their potential yet uh, because they haven't found the Drupal market. 
which is, by the way, like now a million sites or something. It's, it's huge. It's a really big potential. And um, there's actually already 3,000 third-party integrations. Like, I was really surprised when I first went looking for that. Um, that not all of them are, um, are for API companies or SaaS providers, um, but there's a, a really big amount. Uh, there's one for, um, what is it, Watson's, IBM's um, artificial intelligence service. They have a lot of downloads, like 70,000 or, I, I don't know. Like, there's quite, quite some successful um, third-party integrations already in the community. So, but why aren't they contributing more? And I think here we come back to the, to the picture that I showed in the beginning of um, um, the, the waterfall, the, the dam. Like, the, the value is already flowing. There's no, there's no extra benefit that they're getting from, from interacting with the community because people just use the module. They built the module themselves, like some consultant does it for a customer, uh, and then a bunch of people just use it. And in a lot of cases, SaaS companies don't even know that they're being used inside of Drupal. And, um, and I think that's something that we need to change. Because code is just part of the equation. Uh, code is actually a tiny fraction of the equation. Because for the most part, um, if we want to make API companies and SaaS companies successful in our community, we have to help them with adoption. Now, I'm not advocating for hardcore marketing and sales, uh, because I don't think that works. Uh, not in a community. Uh, but there's other ways to do community-friendly promotion and to show people that these are the organizations that are contributing to our community, so maybe we should give our business to them rather to somebody else who is not maintaining their modules, who is not paying for their integration, who doesn't care about the Drupal community. And, um, and I think that we need to, to put those companies that are contributing to, to our community better in the spotlight. Um, and we need to help them. We need to guide them towards more business um, because they need guidance. Because in a lot of cases, they don't really understand the Drupal community. Like, try to explain pre-note to anybody from outside of the community. <laughs> A bunch of crazy people in spandexes doing songs. <laughs> and that's just one of the quirky things that we have. Uh, there's, there's a lot more, um, more crazy things that we do. Um, so like one, one of the, the surest ways to waste your money is to send a bunch of salespeople to an expensive booth at DrupalCon. That's like, you know, unless your product is really, really fine-tuned and you've got great marketing, um, that's just going to be a waste. And that's, what, that's really expensive. Like you have the wages, like, right? Uh, a whole week long, the flight tickets, the hotel, the, the food, etc., uh, etc. Et then the booth, that's 10,000, 15,000 for the smallest package. Uh, and then you're like one or two people. Um, so uh, we, we, need, we need to help them. And there's a term for that. It's called develop, developer evangelism. I don't know who had heard about developer evangelism before. I know you did. <laughs> okay, so every, like, one third, one fourth? It's, it's, um, it's kind of like marketing, don't tell them. <laughs> it's kind of like sales, definitely don't tell them. <laughs> it's also a bit like engineering. Um, it's kind of somewhere in between those three things. Uh, it's all of them and none of them. And depending on what business they're inside, uh, developer evangelists will be doing different, their job in a slightly different way. But it's always, it always comes back to the same principles. Um, and like I've tried to get like um, to reduce the amounts. Like these, these come from this book. Uh, so if you're if you want to learn more about developer evangelism, this is a book that you can just order, uh, and it's quite comprehensive. If you don't have the money, you don't you can even just read it online, which is nice. Um, or if you don't want to wait for uh, the delivery from Lulu, um, but it's. It's very interesting how, how much this resonates with the way I know that, or I've seen that things work in the Drupal community. So first of all, you remove brands. So this is not about um, selling your product. 
flat way. It is, but it isn't. Um, so if you're, if you're just openly going to be promoting and just like buy my product, like nobody's going to buy. Uh, well, no, some people will, but you're going to alienate a community and nobody will, nobody will want to play with you and work with you. Um, so you need, to, you need to find this very interesting balance where you're not playing a zero-sum game. You're trying to build a bigger cake together with the other players in the community. And, and that's very different. That's most, most marketing and sales don't, doesn't work like that. Most of the time, marketing and sales is a zero-sum game. It's like us or the competition. And there's a limited amount of, of customers. And we need to, capture, we, we need to get them all. Um, and um, um, so but developer evangelism is different in that it's softer. And uh, it resonates better with community uh, and community principles. And um, um, so, and, and what does a developer evangelist normally do? They'll do blog posts, they'll do um, uh, sessions, they'll do talks, uh, they'll do cool stuff together with other people in the community, they'll do um, tweets, be part of bus campaigns. Um, and that's the book again. Um, there's a whole community for these people. Uh, there's even a, a events for them. Uh, DevRelCon is a really nice one. I was in London at uh, DevRelCon. I, I couldn't make it to San Francisco, uh, but there's going to be another one coming up in London again. Um, there's a Slack channel. If you want to uh, join that, just send me a message and I, I can send you an invite. There's, um, uh, there's Facebook groups. So there's, there's a whole, like, you know, it's a different type of job with, with its own community. Now, so far, you know, the problem, one solution. And I want to talk a little bit more about the opportunity because I think, um, and this, this ties in really nicely with what Dries was talking about uh, in his keynote. Um, I think that, like I'm a site builder, I'm not a developer. Um, I got into Drupal because I was able to leverage um, uh, the configurations and the interfaces to do really complicated things without having to write code. And that was amazing. And I think that this is one of the key characteristics of Drupal. And Dries actually uh, confirmed that, that site builders and people that do stuff in the UI are our biggest constituency. They're, they're the ones that we, we should be building Drupal for. And currently Drupal is kind of like a GUI in front of a bunch of internal APIs and then some external APIs through, through third party integrations. I believe that we could make Drupal even more of a GUI for even more APIs and that we could actively pursue web APIs and like artificial intelligence uh, services and a bunch of other stuff um, to give them an opportunity to interact with a market and with their audience uh, through, through the Drupal interface. And I think that if we, if we do this right, there's a really, really big opportunity because APIs are growing like crazy right now. Um, there's lots of reasons. Some of the biggest ones are that uh, there's a, a deconstruction of the value chain. So uh, like Amazon, where each department has its own APIs to interact with the other departments, this is happening everywhere. Like uh, you, you, every single Fortune 500 company is working on an API program today. Um, and I think Drupal could get a part of that buy. And that's a big buy. Um, and we could actually provide a lot of value for them. Um, another part, another really important reason is that um, artificial intelligence is rising. And uh, you can't run your own artificial in intelligence service for your tiny little audience. That just doesn't work. You can't train a photo recognition uh, AI on your own data if you only have 100 pictures. You need like global pictures, uh, like pictures from everybody to be able to do that. So um, being able to plug in into our, uh, specialized artificial intelligence is another area where I think there's a lot of growth potential where we could do some really amazing things uh, as a community. Um, so I think, and Drupal really is well positioned for that. I think Drupal could become a GUI for the API web. Um, and but even, even if you don't look that far, even today, uh, there's some really interesting things that we can do for APIs. Now, people who have APIs and from SaaS companies, this is your cue. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so we, we've, been doing, uh, we've been doing a few integration modules for different companies. And uh, like what I want to do is to show some examples of what we've done and how we've done it and what the benefits were of that. So uh, one um, is a Context.io. Context.io is um, an API, it's a RESTful API that sits in front of email inboxes. So what it does, it makes it simple to query an email inbox. So if you're a developer, that's really awesome because you can just uh, write a query and no matter what inbox is on the other end, it just gets the data out. Um, but it's um, like if you're not a developer, you're out of luck. Uh, so what we've done is we've built a module for them. Uh, it's called Context.io, obviously. And what it does, it, it uses uh, feeds, uh, feeds UI to query um, mailboxes. And it's kind of, kind of handy. Cool thing was that we won um, the app challenge from Context.io with this module. Uh, they even gave us a lot of money for that. Um, because, um, because they believed in the value of, of like a prototyping tool, like a tool that um, uh, clickers, people that, that don't write code, would be able to use to, to experience their API and to do stuff with it. And it's really powerful for prototyping. Uh, we've actually been approached by companies that um, wanted to use it to test out uh, how they could use, um, how they could build a, an extension of their product that uh, got data out of the email inboxes of their customers. Now, there's, um, I think it's a really cool module. There's not too much downloads yet, so we have some more work to do on the developer evangelism side. Um, it might also be that um, this is more for consumer apps, and that maybe that space is a little bit harder. Um, but, um, but well, this is one example where, where you basically can build a, a GUI that makes it easier to prototype against an API. Another example is uh, Brightcove. Uh, Brightcove is a video hosting company. To my knowledge, they're the only, there's, uh, they are the only company, the only video hosting company that, um, that actually uh, um, sponsors their module, that actually, well, I was gonna say cares about their module, but probably the others also care. But they're the only company that actively supports the community. Like here, the, the keynote, that was recorded and streamed live by Brightcove as a sponsor. And they've been doing this for years. Um, and uh, so they really get this, like interacting with the community. Um, but they get more out of it than just exposure to a really important audience for them. Uh, because like, you know, we're, uh, the websites we built, um, a lot of them um, use video and, and could use Brightcove. Um, they, they've also been working on making their APIs so that you could use Drupal as a front end for their APIs. And then the cool thing is that then you can really, um, like first thing is that you can then just upload your video right in the interface. So if you, if you want to upload a video for a blog post, you just do it inside of Drupal, which is kind of cool. Um, but it also allows you to heavily customize uh, the, the UI so that you can build custom workflows or uh, add your own metadata. And it all gets synced back to Brightcove. But Drupal is the front end for that. Um, so we've, we've done that in Drupal 8. Like, they're also the first video module to have a Drupal 8 module. Um, so um, yeah, they're, I think that's, that's pretty cool. But just to kind of blow, like this, this idea blew my mind when, I, uh, when we first started talking about it. You could imagine using Brightcove plus Clarify, which is um, a captioning tool, plus Lingotech, which is another bright spot in our community. Like uh, Lingotech, they've been doing developer evangelism really well. Uh, they're on pretty much every Drupal camp. Um, they're, they're almost always a sponsor. Um, and I think they've been benefiting from that very well uh, in the community. Um, but if you would combine these three services uh, and like, well, the connection with Lingotech isn't done yet, but then you, you could just upload a video, get it captioned automatically, get the captions translated automatically, and just have multilingual video like out of the box. And that's awesome, right? <laughs> and, um, and the cool thing is that, yeah, you, you do that through Drupal, which becomes sort of system integration interface between these different services. Um, so, yeah. Um, also, like, 
this has been very, very good for Brightcove. They've uh, tripled, uh, since 2013, they tripled their uh, installs. Um, so people, like this is an enterprise video hosting, uh, video hosting. so it's not, you know, for a, for a small blog uh, there's, where there's no business, um, like you wouldn't use Brightcove, you probably use uh, YouTube or something. But, uh, so they, they normally have the higher end um, uh, customers that, that require high availability and the ability to put ads in and all of that stuff. Um, but they've tripled their install base um, in, um, in, in the last uh, few years. So th this is actually working for them. Um, another example, um, uh, and here, and I, I think it's interesting um, because it's, I don't know if you, do you know the term whole product? Have you heard of that? It's something that comes from, um, uh, I think it's from Lean, wait, what is it? From um, Crossing the Chasm, that book. Maybe a few of you have read it. It's this concept that when you build a new product, um, you might put a product on the market, but in most cases, that's not the whole product. It's kind of like, um, uh, like Acrea. Acrea needs Drupal shops to, to customize the sites so that they can be hosted. And they'll, they don't provide the whole product. They don't provide all the services for you to be successful. You need all these different players to be successful. So in Apigee's case, Apigee is um, uh, an API management company. And for a few years now, they've been using Drupal as uh, the basis for their developer portal, funny enough. Like they have, uh, I think, a few hundred developer portals in some of the largest companies worldwide. Um, that are that are built uh, in Drupal. So and and, um, um, and and they use that so that their customers could customize the experience, the developer experience that developers have when they go and get their API keys and they learn about how an API works, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now their developer portal used to be um, like something that you couldn't just get unless you were a customer or or you know, you were um, uh, starting to explore working with them. Um, but yesterday, I got an email that they'll be working with us to open source their developer portal and to, um, to bring their modules to Drupal 8 and to, um, well, normally, and then to, to basically to do that in the open so that this becomes part of Drupal ecosystem. Because they're already using Drupal, they're already part of the community to some extent but not really integrated in it. And um, I think, like, I've been convincing them, so my, my pitch has been that um, it's not enough, well, okay, having a module in Drupal and using Drupal is great, but they're not getting the full value of Drupal because they're not getting the market value. There's, um, you know, lots and lots of people that are building APIs, that are looking for API solutions, key management, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it, inside of Drupal, uh, that they could be reaching with their product, and, and they already have one leg up because they're already in Drupal. Um, so, and, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's something that's coming. Um, uh, last category, uh, category. Um, you don't necessarily have to start with building an integration. This is something that we've done for a few uh, API companies, where basically we start with a blog post to validate if there is a demand for an integration. <laughs> Still, um, uh, and to, to start maybe find allies that might be interested in, in an integration. So iText is a PDF library in Java. And uh, like, okay, I know PDF, Java, uh, a lot of you are like, ooh. But PDF is still really big. And uh, like the founder of iText, I was talking with him, he had this really interesting way of um, pronouncing it where he said, you know, I, um, PDF is dead, long live PDF. And what he means with that is that um, PDF is kind of like a digital envelope to put content in and, and like to ship content, to, like, to even provide uh, shippable forms, like a lot of really interesting things that you can't really do in another way. Also for long-term storage, like uh, governments are using PDF to package like all the all the um, all the tools and uh, the, the letter types and whatever, uh, so that in 20 years, 30 years, those digital objects will still be accessible. Um, so did yeah, just to say that PDF is still very important. Um, now one thing that we've been looking at is like um, 
could we find a market in the Drupal community for something like uh, Apache Solar, but for PDFs, where uh, there's a daemon that generates PDFs that you, you uh, interact with through an API uh, from your Drupal site, and there's like a, a Java daemon that then generates uh, the PDF files. You could make accessible PDF that way. So like for government and so on, I think it could be very interesting. Uh, but the verdict is still out. We're still running the experiment. Um, so we've done a few blog posts about that. I did that one with my son. That's his work. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and um, uh, we've also done something similar for PySync. PySync is a, an identity synchronization company. Um, so they're big in um, small and medium-sized companies, like mostly small companies that, that want to synchronize uh, account data between different systems. So you, you have your site and you want to get the contact details into uh, Google Contact or something or into MailChimp or something like that. Um, uh, also that is still, the verdict is still out. Um, now these were all examples from our company, uh, but there's a few other brights. Well, okay, I don't want to trump my own horn uh, too much. <laughs> but there's other companies that are doing similar stuff. Um, uh, Think Shout. I, want, I would like to shout out for uh, to, um, uh, because they've they've been doing um, the Mailchimp integration, and they've they've actually done this um, long-standing um, partnership with them to to get them more involved in the community. Gold Gorilla has done the same with Yoast. Um, uh, I really like the way that they've they've been engaging them and like bringing them into the community, having them at events, um, making uh, helping them be a good sponsor at events. So there's, there's a few other bright spots, but very few other companies have taken this approach, and that's why I wanted to, to do this talk about it, that like when you build a module, like okay, what, what happens most of the time is that consultant has a customer, they request a module, they need some sort of integration. Most cases, that's where it ends. Some cases, they might send an email to the company uh, for whom they did the integration, like hey, we did your integration, don't you want to pay for it? And that's about it. But like the discussion is completely about code. There's no promotion, there's no um, adoption or, or sales or marketing or like you know any efforts to actually help them be successful are never mentioned. Uh, and, and you know I understand because it's, it's expensive and it's hard. Like writing blog posts. Um, yeah, we, we have now a technical writer team in the company. But that takes a lot of effort, and it's it's expensive also. Um, um, so, like if you're a smaller company, if this is not your core focus, you, you can't afford doing that. So we we've been thinking about like how could we get how could we make it easier for other consultancies to when they make an integration module uh, to help bring those API companies more into the community. So how can we help SaaS companies to be more successful in the community? And this is why we are, like, we're still working on it, but we're launching a new initiative uh, that we call the API Alliance. And the idea is that um, we would basically become sponsors for events, but not with one company, not with our company, but with a group of companies. And we would go to, like, well, it's a short day, so if you're an API company and you have a Drupal integration and you would like to be at the Drupal Developer Days in Milan uh, in two months, uh, <laughs> contact me. But um, uh, to make it cheaper for API companies to be at developer events. So to cut those costs of sending your own people, cut those costs of being a sponsor, cut those costs of, of um, you know, um, marketing materials and all of that stuff that normally that can mount up to a lot of money and to make it really inexpensive to go to events. And to also have people at events that are developers. Like uh, in the first place, that probably will be our developers. But in the long run, I imagine that we could maybe have, um, you know, people that have been volunteering time to write uh, certain modules maybe even students or, or whatever, um, that, we, um, that we sponsor to come to DrupalCon on the budgets that we get from these API companies. Meanwhile, reducing the total cost of having someone at the booth who actually knows what they're talking about, um, um, and like splitting the cost between a few different providers. And um, 
Um, and, and then also like being able to buy a really expensive booth or like one of the bigger booths. Like we are now thinking about trying to get a platinum booth um, at the dev days. Still a bit shaky because it's, it's short term, uh, but um, well, we're, we're working on that now. Um, other things that we're, we're thinking or we're working on uh, together with the Drupal Association, I've been talking about doing a clickathon in Dublin, which is a hackathon for clickers, for people that do stuff in the GUI. Uh, where um, um, site builders would be able to build business applications just by combining a bunch of APIs and like, you know, the modules and doing cool stuff. Um, an API clinic could be something that we could do where you could go with problems about integrations that you have or if you have specific questions. Kind of like all these things that make it, uh, that provide value to, to sponsors uh, or to API companies so that they can be more successful, have a bigger reach, be more visible, um, while spending not crazy amounts of money. Um, and um, yeah, so, and everybody benefits because the events get more money, developers um, have a reason to ask for, for uh, a contribution, and um, yeah, and the community can grow. Uh, and we can get more, more features into Drupal uh, and have a, a bigger, broader, expanded uh, product. Um, another thing I'm thinking about is ClickerCon. <laughs> ClickerCon is, uh, uh, is something that I've been brooding on for a while and yeah, I haven't bitten the bullet yet, but someday I'll do that, um, which is basically an event for site builders, like a no-code event, Drupal Uncoded uh, is, is uh, how we, we're thinking about calling it. So, and uh, and, and that's, uh, that's the API lines. If you're interested in this stuff, if you're a developer who would like to um, you know, be part of this initiative. If you're an API company who would like to hear more about how this works and be um, like getting emails when we're going to do a booth at some place um, or generally interested in this, sign up. This is a newsletter. Um, we'll, uh, like we, we're also working on a, a white paper about the Drupal market. Like, so what, what is the market opportunity of Drupal? Like, how big is it? Um, who's, who's working? Uh, who's, um, who's already in there? And, and what can you get out of it? And how can you interact with the community? Like, all of this stuff, all of this knowledge that is kind of obvious for us, but really, really alien for marketeers that are trying to get into the community. So, like, making a... And, and that's going to be good for us because they'll know how to interact with us in a way that is community-friendly and they'll, they'll learn how to uh, help contribute to the community so that it's not a zero-sum game. Um, because I've been, uh, I get quite a lot of emails from companies about like, hey, don't you want to use our product? And like, normally that doesn't really work. I, I like, um, like same with, with um, yeah, I, I like seeing community engagement and involvement. So, learn, key learning points from this talk. API integrations are, I think, a, a really big growth opportunity. I think we can, um, we can grow our community and grow the value that we provide to the people in our uh, community and to the, uh, to the API uh, companies that, that are trying to interact with us. Um, Drupal could be a great GUI for the API web. Um, you need more than code to be successful. It's kind of obvious, but um, a lot of people don't think that far. Uh, like most of the time, it's just like throw your code over the hedge, and uh, and that's it. Um, and but I think a really important one is that Drupal is a really valuable market. Uh, and what I mean with that is, like currently, if you look at the CMS market, uh, Drupal and WordPress are in the lead. And like normally, any market, uh, like normally, there's always duopolists. Uh, there's like normally two market leaders, like one really big one, WordPress is becoming that, uh, and then uh, another one um, that, that's also really big. Now, both of them are catering to different cases, and, and, um, but I think that uh, for the foreseeable future, I think that those two are going to be the leads of, of the CMS market, and that's a huge market. Um, it's also, and I didn't talk about that here because time is kind of limited, but um, I think that it's also a really good way to get your product into the market or because we are a community of uh, consultants that are all over the world and we're everywhere. We are often in a lot of different companies. Um, some of, someone in the Drupal community has contact with every single multinational, like several people have. 
Um, so there's, um, Drupal could be a very good vehicle for introducing products into the market and for, for driving growth. Um, traditionally, developer evangelists look more at uh, developer languages like PHP and they'll, they'll build a PHP HCK or, or something like that. I think that for a certain class of uh, APIs, uh, Drupal could be a better uh, vehicle for getting into the market. And that's my talk. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Who has questions? Yeah, probably we should. Oh, yeah, I can, I can repeat your question. <laughs> I'll do it for you. <laughs> so when, when are we going to get you to come to DC and help us with this? Um, we, can, we can do that next time, yeah. Like, uh, we'd, we'd gladly do that, yeah. Um, we talked a bit about it. I think it would be great. Yeah, good. Yeah. Other people? More questions? I know it's late. We're all kind of like hangover from too many hangovers. Yeah? I'll just repeat. Uh, so I was in the session, the last session, about uh, selling. Yeah. But I think that the key is there that we need to show how big the opportunity is. Because in a lot of cases, um, yeah, people don't really know how to express that. Uh, so I think that there, uh, like a joint marketing uh, resource could be very valuable. Um, so this, that's something we're working on. Yeah, and and it's, you're right, the, the e-commerce, um, I know that the commerce guys did a lot of third-party integrations. Um, they, they, they also did an interesting thing where I think they have... Um, uh, like a, an affiliate sales deal with those uh, integrations, so which is different. Uh, so there, there, there's possibilities to do that kind of stuff. You don't just have to ask money for for the integration. Okay. Other questions? So the question was, how do you convince API providers to put money in an integration? It's hard. <laughs> um, I think um, so far, well, it's like with all, all forms of sales. This is a sales question, right? Like how do you, <clears throat> how do you convince the other of the value of what you're trying to offer? Uh, so you need to make the case, you need to, to show the, like what, what we're doing, like the iText and um, PySync. Um, we, we basically did a, a test, a tester. And we just, um, I, and we've done this also for Dita, um, for building a Dita CCMS, that we, we're, we create a blog post, we have a questionnaire on it, and then we just measure how many people sign up. That's one thing you could do. Um, but then, yeah, you need to get in front of enough people with that. So maybe, maybe you need to do something more involved. Maybe the API lines could do that. It's like, would you be interested in, in service XYZ if it would have a provider? Like, you know, maybe that could be, oh, that's a good idea, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's a sales question.
Yeah. And, and that's really weird, right? Salesforce is such a weird case. Like they have so much potential value in Drupal uh, and they don't have, yeah, I, I don't think that they're contributing to that, which is really weird. Um, I, I might see some of them in two weeks. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, uh, no. But it, yeah, uh, some of these companies are just really hard to get into. And, and like some of them are like, you know, like Google and YouTube. Why, why should we, like everybody's already making integrations, so why should we spend money on you? It's a little bit hard. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, then um, thank you very much. Um, it was a pleasure. <laughs>